Software development is the process of conceiving, specifying, designing, programming, documenting, testing, and bug fixing in order to create and maintain applications, frameworks, and other software components. This process, also known as Software Development Lifecycle or SDLC, defines tasks performed at each step in the cycle. It shows the ways to navigate through the complex and demanding process of creating software. Today, there is a wide range of SDLC models available. However, none of them is perfect. Each model brings its advantages and disadvantages for developers. The selection of which model to use depends on the objectives, needs, and constraints of the project. In this video, we are going to learn three different types of SDLC models. The first in our list is called the waterfall model. This method breaks down a project into a sequential map of various steps, where each step feeds from the previous phase. This method was originally defined by Winston W. Royce in 1970. It is also known as the linear sequential life cycle model. This model's process of downward mechanism is similar to that of a waterfall. This model is appropriate for projects with clearly defined goals and unchanging requirements, like small school website development, projects with strict deadlines and the need for stricter control, predictable budget, and timelines, such as governmental projects, projects that must adhere to multiple rules and regulations, provided that enough resources are available, for example, healthcare projects. The whole process is divided into sequential stages. Each stage has concrete deliverables and is strictly documented. That's why it is imperative to complete each phase successfully in order to move on to the next one. This means the next stage cannot start before the previous one is fully completed. Let's take a look at the six phases of the waterfall model. First, requirements analysis. In this phase, all requirements of the project are analyzed and documented in a specification document. A feasibility analysis is done to check if these requirements are valid. Second, system design. In this phase, the system design is prepared, which specifies hardware and system requirements. Third, implementation. In this phase, the source code is written as per requirements. The physical design specifications are turned into a working code. Fourth, testing. In this phase, the code is handed over to the testing team to check the program for all possible defects by running test cases either manually or by automation. The client is involved in the testing phase as well in order to ensure all requirements are met. Fifth, deployment. In this phase, the software is deployed into a live environment in order to test its performance by the end users. Sixth, maintenance. In this phase, support and maintenance for the software are provided to make sure it runs smoothly. If the client and users come across errors, defects, or bugs during use, the software has to be fixed. At this point, let's identify the advantages and disadvantages of the waterfall model, starting with the benefits. The whole process is well documented and well scripted. Therefore, it is easy for project managers to plan, schedule, make use of resources, and define goals. Each phase has a deliverable, thus making the whole process simple and easy to understand. Each phase is separate and completed within a given time frame. There is less need for reworking. For the drawbacks, this model is rigid. It is not possible to make modifications to the requirements once the process begins. There is no room for feedback during the development process. Therefore, there is no room for reflection and revision. This model is not favorable for big projects which involve frequent requirement changes. The end user cannot give feedback until it's completely coded. For example, during the process of development, the end users realized that the feature being developed is no longer needed. Then the developers could be wasting building the said feature. Testing starts after the completion of the development phase. This may lead to late detection of bugs and design issues in the development life cycle. Therefore, you don't know how stable the system is until the end. These shortcomings have given room to alternative approaches and models. This brings us to the next methodology called Agile. This is actually referring to a group of software development methodologies based on iterative development. In general, at the heart of Agile methodologies are iterative development, intensive communication, and early customer feedback. It means Agile is about working in close collaboration both across the team and with the customers. The models of this group put more focus on delivering a functioning part of the application quickly. 
they pay less attention to detailed software documentation and more to software testing activities. This fosters quick development but considerably prolongs software transfer to the support team, as well as makes its maintenance more complicated as more time is spent to find a problem when there's no detailed software description. When is Agile useful? Any startup initiatives where end users' early feedback is required. Most of the mid-sized projects in custom software development where business requirements cannot be confidently translated to detailed software requirements. Large projects that are easy to divide into small functional parts and can be developed incrementally over each iteration. Agile is an umbrella term for several methods and practices. Some of them are the following. Scrum, Extreme Programming, Adaptive Software Development, Dynamic Software Development Method, feature-driven development, Kanban, and behavior-driven development. In this video, we will talk about Scrum and Kanban. Let's now talk about Scrum. It is a lightweight software development methodology that focuses on having small time box sprints of new functionality that are incorporated into an integrated product baseline. We will know more about Sprint in a bit. Scrum methodology was created by Ken Schwaber and Jeff Sutherland. Its aim is to deliver the right product with incremental and frequent delivery of small chunks of functionality through small cross-functional self-organizing teams. Scrum is executed by small teams of between 7 to 9 people. Instead of phases, Scrum projects are broken down into releases and sprints. A sprint represents a time box within which a set of features must be developed. Sprints are sometimes called iterations or cycles. The sprints are usually two to four weeks long, and they are preceded with thorough planning and previous sprint assessment. No changes are allowed after the sprint activities have been defined. At the end of each sprint, you have a fully functioning system that could be released. Multiple sprints might also be combined to form a release, where formal software or product delivery is made to the customer or market. Another example of Agile methodology is the Kanban method. Kanban is a visual system for managing work as it moves through a process. It was defined by David Anderson in the early to mid-2000s. It is a non-disruptive evolutionary method that enables teams to deliver continuously instead of time box sprints, get feedback faster, and reduce the lead time to deliver value to the customer. Kanban is a solution seen to the challenge of the 2-4 to four week sprint cycle of Scrap. It is too long to wait for many business contexts, and many teams found themselves not meeting even sprint-level commitments of scope and quality. Kanban visualizes both the process and the actual work passing through the process. The goal of Kanban is to identify potential bottlenecks in the process and fix them, so work can flow through them cost-effectively at an optimal speed or throughput. The emphasis is placed on plan visualization. The team uses the Kanban board tool that provides a clear representation of all project activities, their number, duration, responsible persons, and progress. Such increased transparency helps to estimate the most urgent tasks more accurately. Communication with a customer is also ongoing. They can check the work results whenever they like, and the meetings with a project team can happen even daily. Due to its nature, the model is frequently used in projects on software support and evolution. We come to the end of this video lesson. I hope I have given some light to your knowledge about software development methodologies and some of its examples. If you find this helpful, please consider liking the video and subscribing to my channel. Please feel free to leave your comments, questions, and suggestions. Thank you!